can I ask members to put themselves on, on mute, please, throughout the meeting and, and obviously on mute when, when needed to talk. Thank you. Agenda substitutes uh, nominated for this meeting and apologies for absence. Yes, Chair, we have apologies from Councillor Sweeney, Councillor Shukat and Councillor Hutchinson and, and Councillor Megan Swift. And we have substitutes, Councillor Jenny Lynn and Councillor Naeem. Right, OK. Uh, members' interests. Um, do any members have any disclosable pecuniary interest or any other interests that might have that they may have in relation to any of the items on this agenda? No. Okay. Admission to the public. Uh, there are no exempt items on this agenda for today, so public are okay. Minutes of the last meeting of the planning committee meeting held on the seventh of July. Um, okay. I think there is only David. Move him. Uh, okay, Councillor Curtin to move them on the seconder for those minutes. I was there, so I'll second them. Right, Councillor Nayum to second them. Okay. Item five, uh, withdrawn applications. I don't think we've any withdrawn applications on today's list. No, no, no withdrawn applications, Chair. Okay, thank you. Right, we have four applications in front of us today. Um, the first one is Crimson Dye Works, Mid Home Road, Edding Bridge. 19 forward slash 01340 forward slash. Um, so over to our officer for this item. Thank you, Chair. I just need to get the PowerPoint presentation to share with you. So bear with me one moment. Is that coming up, councillors? It has. It has, right. I will just put it on to slideshow. Bear with me, I will get quicker at this. Okay, right. Thank you, Chair. As you say, the first application we are considering is um, a uh, reserve matters application pursuant to 18 forward slash 00576 forward slash out um, construction of 14 dwellings. You will see that we have had um, 30 letters of objection received. We had a representation from the parish council, which actually related to the number of dwellings on the site, which of course was set by the outline, so that's not for consideration at this stage. Key issues there, um, I'll just run through them briefly and then we, we can cover them as we go through the plans. Principle of development obviously accepted through the outline approval. Um, appearance and landscaping are the key considerations for this application. You will see um, in your papers, your committee papers, that we have gone through a number of reiterations of this scheme to get to something that the officers now see as being acceptable. Um, again, we'll look at residential amenity as we go through the photographs, um, but we, it, it basically we are meeting all the um, guidelines in the UDP. Um, highways considerations, there have been objections, but this was all dealt with at the outline stage. Um, same with flooding and drainage, obviously still subject to some conditions on this reserve matters approval, and the same with ground condition. In terms of wildlife conservation, it is in a wildlife corridor, so I've given further consideration to this. Um, and I think officers are now satisfied that the proposed landscaping scheme, and you'll see it on, on the plans in detail, will provide net enhancements for biodiversity and protect the integrity of the wildlife corridor. 
So going on to the, um, the plans and photographs, this is the site um, th that you see before you. There's an aerial photograph of the site. Please tell me if I'm going too quickly. There is the submitted, sorry, let me just go back one. There's the submitted location plan, which shows the area of the application in red and the other area of land owned by the applicant in blue. This was the approved layout, layout for the 14 dwellings um, that was given in the outline approval. This is the landscape master plan. As I say, given, given it's um, the nature of the site and the fact it's in a landscape cor a corridor, there has been quite a bit of emphasis placed on this. So there's a master plan there. And there's also um, details, uh, more details of the, of the various landscaping measures that will be put in place. We then look at the, as I say, this has come about through various reiterations. Um, let me just go back a minute. I've gone on too far. Yeah, this is looking at plots one and three. So these are terraced properties. We've then got plots four and six. Plot seven to nine, again, all terrace, but we're now moving on to the detached properties, plot 10, plot 11, and plots 12 to 14 are back to terrace properties. Um, we have, through the consideration of the design, reduced the number of materials, and we've gone back to stone terraces and detached dwellings, which reflects the nature and character of the area. I'll then move on to the photographs. Um, you'll see Hebden Terrace in the background there. There has been objections from Hebden Terrace, but you will see that they are actually much higher than the, the proposal site. So there is the officers consider that there are no um, residential amenity issues um, with Hebden Terrace. Other photographs from the site, um, hopefully um, self-explanatory um, in terms of um, views, obviously into and out of the site. Um, we have, as officers, we have um, checked that all the measurements such as distances between windows, et cetera, all exceed the minimum guidelines. The occupier of the detached property to the southeast isn't affected. Uh, the occupiers of the new properties will actually look over the roof um, of that residence. Some more photographs for you there, just showing you the sort of nature, the higgledy piggledyness of the site. And, and that's it. And I think hopefully I've covered everything that I needed to. And obviously as officers, we're recommending approved with conditions. Okay, thank you, uh, Maria. Um, okay, questions from uh, members to officers. Do we want the slides still up or do we want to take that down? I think if we take it down, then we can uh, we can always go back onto it if needs be. You just need to click on stop sharing. Um, okay. Could be at the oh. top of your screen and share, stop share. Yeah, got it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. Um, yep. Yeah. Questions from members. Councillor Curtin. Councillor Curtin, your microphone's gone again. Can you hear me now? Yeah, just. Can I just ask if all the walling material is stone? It 
is, yes, Councillor. Are, are they natural stone or artificial stone? Uh, as far as I've got in the notes here, they're natural stone. Okay, thank you. It's just that, uh, you know, looking at the photographs there, or the pictures, should I say, with the, with the red colour there, it didn't quite look like stone. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Any more questions for officers? Councillor Clark. Thank you, Chair, for throwing myself away. Um, I'm concerned about the many different types of paving, um, the resin bonded paving, and there's cobbles and sets. Hopefully, they will all be harmonious. Um, it doesn't look like it on the joins, um, but it'd be nice to see, make a condition of seeing those before actual allowing the building. Richard. Fine. Richard, you, you've gone back on to Can't hear you. I was unmuted and then <laughs> muted myself when I spoke, sorry. <laughs> we did we did have quite a detailed discussion with the agent about the the, the, the landscaping and it's quite it's quite difficult to on a on a plan like that to sort of convey the the colours that yeah. and textures that you would that you would guess ultimately. But but the discussions with the agent were very much predicated on avoiding something that would look very um, sort of urban and sort of domesticated sort of. So we're also mindful that with surfacing materials you do need to sort of break them up and have a little bit of contrast and have some different materials yeah. because if it's all the same material or it's all that or it's all the sort of the black top tarmac you can end up sort of just looking like a car park so it's um we have we have tried to go for something that um that will sort of respect the the character of the area but also sort of break up the sort yeah. of the the extent of hard hard surfacing um, but it, it maybe I mean, assuming that the agent is present, it might be something that the agent is able to sort of comment on further when he when he responds. I'm just concerned about it looking like a patchwork quilt. <laughs> yes, I mean, there's a balance between a patchwork yeah. quilt at one end of the spectrum and a sort of tarmac car park at the other, and it's finding the yeah. right sort of the right sort of middle way. Councillor Curtin, did you have Thank another you. question? No, Councillor Lynn. Yes, I, I, I'm, um, I understand what Councillor Clark's saying about not wanting it to look like a patchwork, but I'm also persuaded that the, um, our officers have actually probably done quite a good job in terms of, um, in terms of trying to introduce variety to the, the, um, the, the scheme, really, and trying to make it in keeping with, with, with the setting. So, um, I mean, it may be that, that we'll see what the agent says, and it may be that, that other members are minded to, to ask for an additional condition. But I have to say, I'm quite persuaded by the, the comments that, that our officers have made about not wanting it to just be kind of straightforward tarmac. And if you think about it, and if you think about places all over Calderdale, uh, you know, and little, little closes of houses, you know, and there's quite often, there's, there's like a lot of contrasting materials there. So in some senses, I think the variety actually is, is you know, I would argue it's probably okay and, and in keeping. That's all I wanted to comment on. Um, can I just say that I'm not arguing against the, the different things, just making sure that they, none of them clash, none of them look out of place. That's that's the concern I have. Okay. Do we have any? Uh, do we have any more questions for for officers? No. Okay. We have. An objector. We have uh, Helen. Sorry, sorry. Yes, please. Um, <laughs> it, it's it's just a reassurance. That in the um, last one, it was. It, I think some of the objections are about parking problems. And why would it be any different than it is existing, as existing, like for residents on Hebble Terrace? Why is there any that. difference? Andrew, is this one for you? 
Yeah, I, I mean, I was just going to add, because obviously it's the highways were considered on the outline application. So yes. that's when we looked at the highways considerations and obviously found it to be satisfactory at that stage. But I'll pass over to Andrew. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you, um, Maria. Yeah, the, as was mentioned, parking was addressed at the outline stage, but, but the parking actually meets our requirements. There's, as you can see, there's um, two for the for the proposed dwellings. There's two two parking spaces per dwelling plus um, visitor parking. Because an issue that was raised was potential for parking on street, but there are traffic regulation orders uh, in place nearby to restrict parking. Um, uh, and obviously, the properties around there have their own parking. I mean, so the, the, the real issue only is parking for visitors. Um, obviously, it's a popular area, particularly in summer. Uh, but that would be no different with the development um, and with the previous use. So there's no reason for us to, to add any further um, uh, conditions or objections. Thank you. Okay. No more questions for officers? I think Councillor Naima, for some reason, I think you've come on, you, you're on twice here by the looks of the screen. And you're on, you're on mute as well, Councillor Naima. Uh, my apologies, Chair. The other uh, iPad that I had actually went dead, so I'm on the other one now. I, okay. I'm on only once. Right. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Not a problem. Not a problem. Right. Are we moving on to uh, objectors now? We have a Helen Blage. Two seconds, Chair. I'll just bring her. Okay. So I'm just trying to get the stopwatch up. Chair is fine. I'm happy to sign <clears throat> if if that's all, if, unless you want to. Um, I've I've got it set up now. Yeah, please. I'm I'm happy to do it. It's fine. Okay. Helen, can you, Hello. Uh, can, can you can hear, you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? We yes, can, we can loud, hear you. We can hear you loud and clear. Helen, okay. you, you have five minutes uh, with regards to putting your objection forward to councillors and officers. Okay. Uh, what I will do is roughly when you've got about a minute left, I will I will let you know. Um, okay. After the five minutes are up, obviously we, we have to stop you dead on the five minutes. Uh, yeah. If you finish before, that's fine. What will happen then is, is, is councillors will ask you questions. If they've got any questions to ask you, they will ask you them after your five minutes. Okay. Right. right. So it, it's over to you, Helen. You can see me now. We can see you as well. My name is Helen Flage. Um, I live at 4 Hebden, directly adjacent to the application site. And I do object to the current application, along with 30 other residents that live in Midgehull. So that's basically pretty much all of us. Um, the application site is located in the most valued and beautiful landscape in the borough and on a highly visible and prominent gateway parcel. We believe the design of this development will be ugly and intrusive and not in keeping with the special landscape and architectural character of the area and should be refused by members. The proposed design of the buildings and the landscaping is inappropriate for this special landscape and is not in character with the local area. Um, national planning policy and your development plan actually require new development to be in character with the local area, but there is no information submitted with this application to actually tell you what the existing character is. There's been no character appraisal undertaken to actually inform your assessment of the design and whether it's appropriate or not. This design idea of this area, this part of Carcastle Crown, formed by traditional stone built buildings with extensive use of natural materials such as slate roofs, timber, wi timber windows, with well proportioned and symmetrical window and door openings. The buildings are quite rightly subservient to the beautiful landscape, which is heavily wooded and naturalistic. This creates a seamless built and natural landscape. And this is a special quality of this part of Harcastle Crags and why it's such a treasured beauty spot. The proposed design is more befitting of a town centre. The proposed facade and fenestration design is poorly articulated with a random assortment of windows and doors. And it's completely out of character with the uniform and well-proportioned Victorian symmetry of the surrounding buildings. 
The proposed design introduces alien and intrusive features such as zinc roofs and aluminium window frames instead of natural slate roofs and timber window frames with traditional Victorian style casement windows. So it will appear alien and intrusive and visually jarring and it will introduce a modern urban character where a rural and traditional character is needed. As your officer's report indicates, the proposed facade design is based on entirely subjective set of decisions between the applicant and the planning officers, and it bears no relation to the surrounding character. And I'll say again, there's been no character appraisal actually undertaken to inform the proposed design. There's been no evidence provided at all that there will be net environmental gain um, which is a problem as all the habitat on site, including many mature trees will be removed. So there is no statutorily compliant design and access statement that's been submitted with the application that actually appraises the context, the landscape character of the area. And there's been no specific landscape and visual appraisal submitted that actually explains what the character is. And without these critical reports, both officers and members have insufficient evidence to be able to judge the acceptability of the proposals in terms of design against both national planning policy and your own development plan policies. So I strongly urge members to refuse the application on the basis it's not in conformity with development, development plan policies B1 on design and any 12 development in the special landscape area or with paragraph 130 of MPPF and the National Design Guide. I spent a significant amount of time on this application. I'm a professional town myself. The outline application was not dealt with professionally. There was not a design and access statement submitted with the outline application, but you still approved it as an and you should not have done that. So the outline was flawed. I was, given, I was given assurance that the detailed planning application would be sorted out in light of the errors made with the outline, but it has not been sorted out. And the character is not suitable for this site at all. And it will actually be a real blot on the landscape in such a beautiful beauty spot in Calderdale. It's thinking, and it needs to be based on a proper character appraisal and a design and action and a landscape and visual impact. These reports were not sufficient and they should have been. So these decisions that you recommended to by your planning officer are in danger. But us, the residents, will have to live with this scheme for many years to come. People walk past the site all the time and I will investigate judicial review, making a claim for judicial review with this application because to date the that's, authority has dealt with it very well. That's five minutes, Helen. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Richard. Yes, there's some points there which I um, need to uh, um, Need to respond to um, a, a matter which Miss Flage has raised previously in representations to the council, and I can confirm that the draft planning committee report was referred to a barrister at King's Chambers in in Manchester, a planning barrister, before it was um, before it was published, and. Um, Clearly, if, if, if the barrister had advised us that the decision was susceptible to legal challenge, then it wouldn't have been placed on the agenda this afternoon. So I think we've um, undertaken the, the relevant safeguards there. Um, a, a particular point um, Ms. Flage referred to was the zinc roofs. Um, she's correct that there were zinc roofs proposed on an earlier iteration of, of the drawings, but members will note from the committee report that the elevations went through a series of different, a series of amendments, and the proposal for um, zinc roofs was um, was 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 removed, and the proposal now would be for a natural a natural slate roof covering. Um, 
I think a general point to make is in the context of the design, we need to bear in mind that this is an industrial site. Um, yes, there is obviously sort of traditional Victorian cottages and terraces around the site, but um, the, 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 the precedent is, I think it wouldn't, it's not necessarily appropriate to take um, the sort of the, the, the uh, a perceived requirement for um, something that mimics the sort of the Victorian cottages as the as as the sort of the starting design, well, the design point. Sorry, I'm not I'm not going to get into a. An oh, but that is the character. Right. Sorry, there's no. It goes on a policy stage. The sorry, good design no. should respond sorry. to the local character. I'm sorry, Helen. There's no debate at this point here. Well, it's a shame but, there isn't because you can't have a very. No. Helen, Helen, what will happen is members now will ask you questions. You've got the opportunity now to actually come back with your points within those answers to the questions that's going to be asked to you, Helen. Um, I, I think do you want to just do you want to finish up? Yeah, point. I mean, all I'll say in response to that is that planning policy does not require developments to copy what is in the surrounding area. And through the changes in design, clearly the, the agent has attempted to incorporate features like the use of um, natural stone and roofing materials, but tried to put a, a modern interpretation on that um, on a site which, as I say, historically has been um, has been industrial the just the point about um, again another sort of point in, in relation to window frames obviously miss miss Flage refers to um, timber windows but clearly a lot of the existing windows in the properties at midge hole are, are are plastic so I don't I don't think that could be a sort of a, a planning requirement that the windows are are, are constructed of, of, of timber. Okay, thank you, Richard. Do any members have any questions for for Miss Flage? Helen. No, there's no members. Okay, thank you, thank you, Helen. There's there's no questions for you at this point. Thank you for your time. Appreciate you coming along. Okay. Uh, do we have any? Uh, we have, do we have a councillor that's wanting to speak on this? No, I don't think we have, have we? So we've got the applicant. Hello. Uh, our agent. Yes, Sorry. please. Councillor, yeah. Thanks. I'd like to say something. Oh no, I'm in councillor to actually speak on on behalf on it. Not. Oh no, no, not on behalf. No, no, no. <laughs> not, not <laughs> no. Um, We've got the applicant or agent, Mr. Richard Smith, who was the applicant, to speak next. We have um, the agent who's going to speak first, which is Nick Willock. So I'm just bringing him through for you now. They're right. actually sat together, so. Right, okay, thank you. <coughs> Nick, hi, thank you for joining us. Uh, Nick, again, you've got five minutes to to discuss this, to talk on this. Um, again, at the end of this, uh, members will have the opportunity to ask you questions. Again, it's it's a time five minutes. I will let you know uh, when you've got sixty seconds left. Okay, just bear with us one second. Right, okay, Nick, it's over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, committee. My name is Nick Willock, and I'm the planning agent for this application. Members, at the time outlined, planning permission for 14 houses was granted earlier last year. Three of the five reserve matters were assessed and found to be acceptable, there being access, layout, and scale. So the current application is for the two remaining reserve matters, appearance and landscaping which, as the officers have pointed out, essentially cover the external facades of the houses, road and parking materials, boundary walls and planting, etc. In taking on board comments made by local residents, we have fully cooperated with planning, conservation and ecology officers in order to amend the plans appropriately. The applicant has given the architect a free hand to design the scheme, 
which is now acknowledged to respect the local built form through the use of natural stone, blue slate, and traditional dry stone walls, while also providing bespoke design elements so the development has its own identity. We've been through a number of different design solutions for the site over the nine, last nine months. A lot of time and hard work has gone into this to ensure the development before you today is high quality and fully in keeping with the area. Members, this derelict industrial site has come to the end of its economic life, sadly, and has now been empty for 10 years. It is not in any way benefiting the local area as it stands, either visually or environmentally. And the development provides the opportunity to clean up and redevelop the site for much needed housing. It's also worth noting that this brownfield land is classed as a windfall site for your borough-wide housing requirements, and will negate the need to find space for 14 houses elsewhere in future for example, on Virgin Greenbelt land. We would therefore respectfully request that the Planning Committee approves the two reserve matters of appearance and landscaping and allows this development to get off the ground. I'll now pass you over to Mr. Smith, the applicant. Good afternoon. I'm Richard Smith. I'm the owner of Crimsworth Dye Works. I'm a technical dye by profession and I've been employed in the dyeing industry since leaving the Halifax Technical High School in 1963 at the age of 16. My first visit to Crimsworth Dye Works was after Hebden Dyeing Company had gone into receivership in May 1983. With the help of a government guaranteed loan, I acquired the assets of the old Hebden Dyeing Company, which included Crimsworth Dye Works, and started trading as Hebden Dyeing and Finishing Company in September of the same year. After 26 years of trading, I had lost a lot of business due to textile manufacturing going overseas and the banking crash only made matters worse. I was having to lay off my employees frequently due to lack of orders. Most of them had worked for me for many years, relying on me to provide them with a living. It was with great sadness that I ceased trading in September 2009. My remaining order book went to Century Dying in Elland. At that time, I had 23 employees, most of which I assisted to get new jobs, some with Century Dying and some with my competitors. However, I lost the business that I had spent over 26 years building. In an ideal world, I would still have my business with my son and daughter managing it. I tried without success to rent or sell the property as an industrial unit. When this failed, I proceeded down the route to get planning permission to convert the site into a residential one. By February 2019, I got outline planning permission for demolition of the site and 14 new homes. I have cooperated at every stage of this process with the Calderdale Planning Department. My planning advisor, my architect and myself have attended a number of meetings at Westcott House to try and resolve this reserve matters application. I do hope for a favourable decision. Left, uh, Sorry? 60 seconds left. You've got a minute left. I do hope for a favourable decision. I'm 74 years, 74 years old this year, and it has taken a long time to get where we are now. Thank you all for listening. Okay. Right, thank you. Um, members, any questions for Nick and Richard? Councillor Clark. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to make a comment, really. Um, I rather like the landscaping. Um, what, I, what I'm not too struck on is the red cedar. I can't understand why that would be introduced instead of using, say, the high, sto high stone stone walling. What, is there a reason why that red cedar is there rather than I just don't think that that fits in with the valley. Um, and Richard, I left HTHS in 1966. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nick, Richard, do you want to come back to that answer? It's the, um, it's that cladding. Is it, yeah, sorry, we're a little, a little bit confused. I'm not sure red cedar. Do you mean on the materials on the houses or in the landscaping scheme? Yes, on the house. Uh, or yeah. the, the, oh, yes, it's the door. It's just the, the entrance doors and the garage doors. 
Um, we don't mind what type of wood. We've just said there would be timber. So, um, you know, if, oh, if you... well, I've, I've been looking on the planning um, documents, right? And we have a superseded plan of the materials. Mm. And we also have the most recent materials. They both show red cedar as, but... as a facade, as a facade yeah. of the housing. Richard, do you want to come in at this point? Yeah, the, the, um, an earlier iteration of the scheme included red cedar um, yeah. panels um, within the elevation. That has been <coughs> replaced with, um, and I've, I've, I've pasted them into the into, into the report. So if you if you look at the final iteration on the on on the report, um, you'll you'll see that the the red cedar. The, the wooden panels in the elevations have been replaced with with stone that would have a okay. different. Okay, is that is that the sandstone or the rough stone? That would be that would be the sort of the rougher the rougher stones. So okay. the, just so that there, there are no materials be, for that. There isn't a yeah. material so document. The, the, it's, it's no longer proposed to have the the the, the large areas of okay. uh, of, of timber panelling um, because that's not to be um, um, what's the word it is not 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 a, um, a sort of complementary material but as as the agent says obviously there'll be sort of timber doors um, which you know could be finished you know however um, you know however the um, is, is, is desired Okay, thank you. Okay, any more? Yeah, that set my mind at rest. Okay, any more questions for the applicant and, and agents? No. No. Okay. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Richard. I appreciate okay. your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, any comments or questions for? Officers, Councillor Curtin. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, clearly, this, this is a beautiful area with special, interesting uh, landscapes in the area. And I appreciate we've got some Victorian stone terraces at the rear there. But I'm quite happy with these plans. And we've seen modern uh, dwellings fit into landscape areas like this before and blend with Victorian uh, dwellings. The proposed scheme is far better than what's there now, so I'm quite happy to move officers' recommendations to permit the application. Okay, right. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Baines. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I agree with David, and, and uh, I'd like to second his proposition. Okay. Councillor Lynn. I, uh, no, I was simply going to second myself had not Councillor Baines beaten me to it. Right, okay. Uh, Councillor Clark? I, I too was going to second. <laughs> okay. So we've got um, we've got a, a, a move to a proposal on the table to move uh, officers' recommendations to permit. We've also got a, a second to that as well. So all those in, in favour of permit? One, two, three, four, and Councillor Curtin, five. Right, okay, that's that's carried. So thank you. That application has gone with officers' recommendations to permit. Okay. Thank you. Moving on to Councillor Baines. Uh, yeah, in, in the next in the future presentations, the, the on my screen, the largest I could get the, the last presentation on was about the size of a postcard. And I just wondered if it could be enlarged. I did I did send a, a, a message out to that effect, but um, you know, so I'd uh, I'd appreciate that because it was it was so small I had to get my face right up to the screen to look at the detail of it. Thank you. Okay, I will I will try my best, councillor. I might need some instructions from others, but I will get the next one up and before I get started, let's see if I can get it to a size that, that you can all read. Right. 
Okay. I think it was showing the next slide as a it was it was showing the slide you're on and then the next slide coming up for some reason. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Because I put I it on yeah, I put it on I the slideshow. So let me yeah. just have a look. Let me get this one up and get it sharing. Right. Well we'll go, we'll move on to the next one then, which is uh, Hebble End Mill, Hebble End Ebden Bridge, 19 forward slash 01051. Um, is this you again, Richard, or you, Maria? It is me presenting, but obviously Richard helping with questions. So right. bear with me and let me just make sure I can get this up no. for you. No, no problem. How is it appearing now? Middle of the screen. It's fine for me. It's really good. If you pinch it out, you can at make the bottom it right hand corner. Yeah. So Sorry, make Richard. The bottom right, and I'm um, go down, and then yeah. to the left. To the left. Sorry. Sorry, the left. Oh, to the left. Yeah. No. The little, the little um, logo which shows a like a square with a line under it, like a projector. Um. So, so if you go to the bottom. Yeah. And you go to the right, to the other side, and um, go to the go across more. Past the plus and minus thing to the first. Yeah, I'm I'm pressing on it at the moment. It's no, this one that there. says fit not to window. No. A bit more to the left. Bit ah. more to the left. Come back to the left. No, come oh. down to the bottom again. Can you see can you see it? <laughs> Yeah, if you put in slide view, put in slide view now, it should be all right. That looks that looks good now. Okay, let me put it onto slideshow. Right. How's that? Yeah, you just got that picture on the side. It's the next slide. Yeah. You don't want to see the next. You don't want to see the next slide at the same yeah. time. Excuse me, chair. If if we if the the viewers are um, you can expand it yourself by pinching out from the middle. Pinch your screen and pull out. If you're not allowed, you're not allowed. Yes, you can. You're right. Yes, Steph's absolutely right. Well done, Steph. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. That's it. No, that's that's fine. Is that Marie? I think. Is that okay? Sorry, I'm. Um, um, it looks fine. It looks fine. Does that? Okay. Sorry, it's the best I can do. I'll um. Hopefully, you can read it. I'll I'll, I'll make sure I talk slower as well. Right. Um. Right. Okay. So this application nineteen forward slash zero one zero five one, Hebble End Mill, Hebble End Hebden Bridge. Um, first floor extension to provide holiday let accommodation. Um, as you'll see, again, we're looking at things where we've had a number of reiterations just to make sure that we're getting this right. We've got, uh, we had two letters of objection received and we also had some parish council representation. Their main concern was to do with this glass roof. And I just want to make it clear that the the majority of the glass roofing is actually refurbishment of the existing. So it's refurbishment of what's already there. There is a small additional piece, 
bits that is being introduced at a higher level, but that is actually on the river frontage. So it's only seen by places like the co-op and the industrial units on the other side of the river. So there hasn't been any objection to that. Um, in terms of the key issues, um, just briefly before I go through plans and, and, and photographs, principle of development um, within our employment policies, we do not exclude holiday use. So it is in general conformity with our local policy. Um, and it's considered that it would actually improve the facilities and the business units um, on the ground floor. In terms of tourism, we haven't had any new comments from the tourism officer, but um, the previous application, it replicates that and they supported and provided data in support of the application. In terms of impact on heritage assets, the conservation officer has been fully involved, has, has um, agreed that less than substantial harm um, arises from this development and when that comes into place we obviously have to look at the planning balance in terms of public and employment benefits and we see that in this case they do outweigh that less than substantial harm. Residential amenity, the, the, there's been a lot of concern from residents of Fountain Street over the loss of amenity as a result of new tourist accommodation just to say that all the replacement windows on the eastern elevation will be obscure glazed as mitigation. There'll be no increased height. Um, physical re relationship be between the buildings will remain as existing. And I think the big area has been this fire door. Now it is literally only a fire door. It is not the entrance to the property. The occupiers of the um, holiday unit will use the main entrance as other, all other users of the building. Um, layout design and materials, um, you'll see the details of this on page 30 to 31 of your report. Um, highways, we've had no objections from the highways officer subject to conditions on the details of the contractor's compound and the pre prevention of mud on the road. Ground condition, sorry, flooding and uh, flooding and drainage. We did originally have an EA objected um, objection due to the pro proposed tourist accommodation actually being on the ground floor at that stage. Um, but the applicant has met with the EA and produced an updated flood risk. And now um, the EA are happy and we're obviously putting in a condition that requires the development to be carried out in accordance with the FRA. Um, ground conditions, we've had a phase one report that we're satisfied with. Wildlife conservation, again, wildlife corridor, um, but the council's expert is happy with the survey provided and the mitigation proposed. So obviously it has had to be a careful balance of considerations and your officers believe that we can balance in favour of this proposal. Just to go through then the plans, um, this is the site um, edged in red. Aerial photo, so you can see it obviously in terms of what's there at the moment. Location plan submitted with the application. Now this is the existing ground floor plan. So we've got a few existing plans here, just showing you what's there at the moment. Existing upper floor plan, existing Northern elevations and Eastern elevations. Obviously the Northern elevation being the one where there was con some concern about the introduction of roof lights, but the fact that they are actually onto the ri riverside and commercial properties and the existing southern elevation. We then moved on to, oh, sorry, existing western elevation. We then move on to the provo proposed um, canal elevation. And as you can just see the hatched area, that's the um, flood proofing to walls, windows and doors. There, we've got the eastern elevation. Um, and this is the um, escape door that has, has uh, caused some concerns. But as I said, that is literally 
just um, in, in case of emergency. We've got the proposed riverside elevation. Um, and this is where we've got the introduction of some new glazing and some slight increase in height. But as I say, the, uh, the only implications are across the riverside on that. We've got the proposed western elevation. There has been, um, through the consideration of this application, a lot of going back to the agent to check on floor levels, et cetera. So we as officers are now confident that we've got all the correct measurements and we've been able to, able to make sure we've considered this in a proper manner. Um, okay. We've got the proposed upper floor level um, there. And there we have got proposed ground floor plan. Obviously, this will be the entrance um, to the um, holiday unit. So they'll be using the same entrance as everybody else. There'll be some sort of security system in place to make sure that they can get in and out to, um, without when, when the rest of the building's not operating. Proposed section through flat roof. Got quite a lot of plans here to take in. Um, section two through the lift shaft. And right, we're on to some photographs now. So this is the East Elevation and Fountain Street. As I say, there is nothing changing in terms of distance between buildings and height of buildings at this stage. We've got the existing Riverside Elevation. Um, and this is where you'll see a slight increase, but on this side, so again, away from um, the properties on he Hebel End that will be affected. Um, you've got the um, yard and corridor between seven and nine Hebel End in the mill, that stays as existing. You've got the riverside elevation from the east um, onto Fountain, and you've got Fountain Street there. So that's, that's Hebel End Mill there. You've then again seen it from a different location and that's the number seven to nine Hebel End. So this building obviously wraps around seven to nine, but as I've said, only increase is in a location that will not affect those properties. Um, view from Neptune House towards the lower Western elevation and part of the Western elevation, the lower courtyard. That's, this is taking it from a bit of a distance, so you can see it in the context of what surrounds it and the buildings that surround it. And as I've stated, we are looking to permit with, con with conditions. Okay, thank you, Maria. Um, I think some of the members that's on this board will uh, remember this building quite well. I think we've uh, a number of us have actually been and, and visited the building as well, uh, I think on a couple of occasions. Um, so any questions from uh, members to uh, officers? No, no questions. Uh, we have no objector, we have no council comments. We've just got the applicant wishing to speak, uh, David Fletcher. I'm just bringing them through now, Chair. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I've just asked him to, oh, I should be unmuted now. Right. Mr. Fletcher, can you uh, hear us okay? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you uh, loud and clear. Um, you should be used to this by now. We, you have uh, five minutes um, to put your con your question across, your uh, item across. Um, I'll let you know when you've got 60 seconds left and then the usual will ask you uh, questions at the end. Just bear with us, get the stopwatch up again. Right, David, it's, uh, it's over to you. Right, thank you very much. Uh, well, 
here we are again. I think uh, councillors have seen this scheme a number of times and the uh, outline given by the officer was excellent. So I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about what is or what is planned. Um, I really want to say a few words about the philosophy of it all. Um, as a president of Pennine Heritage, quite a, a well-known uh, environmental charity based in Hebden Bridge, you would expect me to uh, think about conservation. This is a conservation scheme. This mill is at the crossroads, desperately at the crossroads. Uh, we have a choice now uh, whether we refurbish this uh, wonderful heritage building on the canal side or whether we end up with a pile of rubble because the roof is falling in in parts and a few nostalgic photographs in black and white about Hebden Bridge as it was. Clearly, I want to see conservation, not just conservation of the building, but conservation of the jobs. There's a very thriving art and craft community in there. I want to keep them there. I want to produce extra space so that there can be more of them. I also want to um, conserve the cultural identity of Hebden Bridge. Um, some of you will know the Arts Mill Gallery, which was previously in Linden Mill, started by an artist called David Wright, quite a famous artist, who unfortunately didn't live to see the completion of the gallery. But some of you will know the gallery has now been um, rather unceremoniously thrown out of Linden Mill. And uh, I saw an email, a plea for help. And by moving things about in the plans for Hebel End, we've now incorporated the gallery subject to planning consent um, within the ground floor of Hebel End. And so we will be adding to the cultural and artistic attractions of the area. Um, how will it be paid for? That's a good question. Not by me. It's going to be very expensive. It will be paid for by the banks, those, those famous shadowy people out of sight. Of course, the banks will want their money back with interest. This is where it gets interesting. Um, the money to pay them back will come from tourists. We've had a, new, a few objections about visitors and tourists. We're encouraging visitors and tourists. I mean, without visitors, the post-industrial uh, economy of Hebden Bridge would be dire. Visitors overall are a good thing. Overnight visitors are 10 times better than day visitors in terms of their input to the local economy. And so the answer to who is going to pay for this, it's the overnight visitors who will stay in the proposed eight or nine holiday apartments in the building. Um, we, I've done my sums carefully. I have to do my sums carefully. I've got the experience of bridge mill to go on and I think we can make it work. The overnight tourists will pay a, quite, a, quite a good price and that will be, if you like, a Hebden Bridge tourist tax. Now we don't have a tourist tax in Britain you will notice when you go on foreign holidays that quite often you get a bit of a bit of something added to the bill and it says tourist tax and that means that the local authority then can take that money and improve tourist facilities well i'm doing it the other way around i'm improving the facilities first getting the tourists to pay for it and uh, and then that money will pay off the banks and everybody's going to benefit the local authority will get rate income um, businesses in the town will get visitor income and everybody will get an improved building on Route 66 along the towpath through Hebden Bridge Six instead of just left, the rather Fletcher. derelict site we have now. 60 seconds left Mr Fletcher. Right so to me this is a you know the right thing it's an interesting twist to the tale. We're, the visitors to the town who come here to enjoy our countryside and, and the character of our townships and the cultural attractions in places like Hebron Bridge, things like the, um, uh, the, the the trade club just just down the, the road from where we we're talking about, they will have somewhere to stay. So the interesting twist is those that are attracted here by the attractions will be contributing to the upkeep and improvement of some of those attractions. And to me, that is just as it should be. Uh, a, a wonderful rounding of the story. Okay, that it, Mr. Fletcher. Okay, thank you. Any 
questions from members to Mr. Fletcher? Councillor Clark. Thank you, Chair. Um, Mr. Fletcher, on your planning statements, um, statement in support of planning applications, you've mentioned the, um, the new entrance lobby where there is a roof over, uh, an extended roof over that. You've also mentioned that it will be um, available for visitors to sit upon, is, but it's not mentioned in other documents. Is that still part but of the will be The existing entrance uh, lobby, yes. we, do, we, do get to, we do get visitors sitting there. There is, as you know, a cafe ad adjacent, and so some people yes. like to get a cup of coffee and sit there. In the new proposals... So it's not the extended roof they're supposed yeah, to be sitting in, in the new proposals, Part of that will be covered by a new roof and that will be sitting out space for the residents in the holiday apartments. Uh, oh. You'll notice that the holiday apartments, because of the interests of surrounding neighbours, I mean, we've tried to take the interests of Fountain Street and, and House uh, 7 Stroke 9 into account so that the actual tourist apartments don't have much of an outlook because if they yeah. had an outlook, it would be overlooking permanent residence and that wouldn't be desirable. So yeah. we've got um, obscured glass on the side near Fountain Street and we've got covered walkways for people to get from the from the lift to the actual apartments in the building. So um, to give something to the tourists, if they're paying for it, they deserve something back. Uh, there will be some sitting out space above the foyer and also on, on a, a flattish area um, near the lift shaft. Uh, so that at least they can sit out in the sunshine, that's if we get any, and uh, and get a breath of fresh air and enjoy the, the sight of uh, barges going past on the canal and so on. So it's a case of something for everybody. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr Fletcher, there's also a, a low level flat roof, which is intended, I think, as a refuge for flood uh, flooding of the ground floor. Would that be accessible for anyone to sit up on the any time, or is it just for an emergency? It's it's for emergency <coughs> and also for the, the tourist um, residents, the people who are staying overnight. I mean, there's been alarm about the number of tourist residents there might be. The flats are all strictly two person, two person flats. No drugs, no smoking, preferably no pets. We've got a, a mixed reaction to children, depends how good they are. Uh, but that flat area could hold a few deck chairs for just for the uh, the holiday makers, like the space at the front. Um, and uh, we need to do that because the, the existing roof in that area is particularly dire and needs to be removed. We can't use those sections of the ground floor if we don't put new, some new sort of roof there. And uh, we, do need, we do need a bit of space. It will also house um, on one side some uh, water tanks because this, as well as being a heritage scheme, is a, is an, is a sustainability scheme. Yeah. Um, it will be heated by heat pumps, water source and ground source. It will have, uh, with it being a north light roof, that leaves all the south light, the south facing spaces for solar panels. And we also intend to take rainwater from this roof, there will be a lot of gutters like there always is in a north light roof, which will be collecting the rainwater from those gutters into tanks on that flat area. And then we'll be using uh, that water for things like flushing the toilets and so on in the building. So we're trying to practice energy conservation and uh, water conservation in this building, just like I do presently at, at Bridge Mill, which is, I think, the only business in this area that is not just carbon neutral, but actually carbon negative. And, and we hope to do the same at Hebelin. Right. Any, more, Thank you, Mr. any more questions from members? No, okay. Mr. Fletcher, thank you very much for your, for your time. Well, thank you very much for listening. Thanks, and I must say, uh, well, thank you very much to the officers of the council. I've, had, I've, I've spent a lot of time with planning officers with Richard and, and with Paul and with the conservation officer and, uh, and, and gained a lot from their advice. Okay. So I, I see this as an all-round 
scheme. Yes, it's very well. It's a private to thank, everybody. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Okay, moving on with uh, any any questions, comments, um, proposals from from members. Councillor Baines, Councillor Lynn, Councillor Curtin, Councillor Baines. Yeah, I, I, I just think this is a, a, a very good scheme. I, I enjoyed it. I, I liked it last time it was presented to us and they've eliminated the problems which were seen on that one. So I, I would like to move that we do accept officers' recommendations on this. Thank you. Right. We've got a proposal on the table. Councillor Lynn. And I would like to second Councillor Baines, Baines' proposal that we permit. Okay, so we've got a proposal. We've got a second there. Councillor Curtin. Yeah, thank you, Chair. So obviously, I was going to second that, but it's just a comment now. Uh, this is an excellent scheme. We've discussed it in detail before. And obviously, and, and more so at this time now with the current situation that we've got, if it brings uh, tourists into Hebden Bridge, that's absolutely excellent. And the more, the better. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Clark. Councillor Clark, you're still on mute. Councillor Clark, you're on mute. <laughs> Thank you. I was going to second to, uh, but I'd like to congratulate um, Mr. Fletcher and the planning officers um, on their foresightedness. Okay. So we have uh, we have a proposal on the table from Councillor Baines, and we've had that seconded by Councillor Lynn. All those in, in favour of the proposal? One, two, three, that's unanimous. Okay, so that's actually that's actually carried. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That application has passed. That's gone with officers' recommendations. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the next item, item three, land rear of hillside. Copley Lane, Halifax, uh, application number 20, forward slash 00307, forward slash. Okay. It's, it's me again, I'm afraid, Chair. I promise this will be the last time you're getting fed up with me. <laughs> right, I'm going to see if I can get make this work better this time. I've got some instructions now. Just whilst my colleague is setting that up, I think the I've had a note to say say that the objector has got internet problems. So we have a we have a written statement that can be read out if the if the objector is unable to uh, join the join the meeting. Okay. How, how is that, councillors? That looks fine to me. Uh, Councillor Baines, is that okay? Looks fine by me. Yeah, that's better than before. That's that's in line. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right. I'll I'll start then. Um. Yes. This is um application twenty forward slash zero zero three zero seven. It is an amendment to a planning approval. Um. Eighteen forward slash zero zero nine eight six forward slash full. That approval was for one pair of semi-detached dwellings. Um, that development is actually under construction. Um, in terms of what has occurred with this site is that the siting of the two dwellings is not as um, proposed on the approved plans, which have resulted in some issues, particularly with highways and parking. Um, and obviously that has resulted in the need to come forward with a new planning application. So now the application is for one dwelling. There's five letters of objection received. Um, just going through the key issues. Principle of development, obviously permission on this site previously for two. So the um, principle acceptable. As I've said, the issue has been that it has been developed closer to the road than the existing approval, which has resulted in less parking and turning being available. 
Residential impact, um, again, no impact as it exceeds our UDP guidelines. Layout, design and materials. Materials all acceptable, natural stone, blue grey concrete roof, tiles, grey UPVC windows and doors. Highways considerations, obviously this is the key thing and you might want to um, ask some questions of the highways officer, but the siting has a change from the original approval. Um, but so in terms of the Mendy plans, we are now looking at one dwelling with a double garage included. So to provide two parking spaces and tracking to a now turning and maneuvering that highways are happy with. Um, wildlife conservation issues, it mirrors that of the previous approval, um, so not, a check to, not um, affected by these changes. Same with flooding and drainage, um, although we'll still apply a, a drainage condition. And trees and landscaping, we have had some details, but again, we will still require the imposition of a condition on that point. So just going through the plans, this is the siting question. That's Copley Lane, an aerial view of that site. A, a uh, extract from the plans that were submitted with the application, again showing the red line. And this is basically, this is what we are looking at now in terms of it being one detached dwelling. And you can see in the middle of the screen there, the double garage that is allocated uh, on the ground floor, and you'll see that the tracking information that the applicant and agent have provided. Again, that shows that in a little bit more detail with the site levels there, again, just showing that it's um, allowing the officers to make sure that it all works in practice. Again, as proposed, um, larger scale. So hopefully you can see, see that in more detail. And obviously then in terms of the changes to the elevations. Examples of materials that are going to be used on that one set aside alongside the elevations and obviously the, the back box to be provided. Showing how it fits into the landscape through the sections. That's blank on my screen. It may be blank on yours as well. Um, Let me just check that there shouldn't be anything on these screens. Sometimes there are just blank slides left in, so it might uh, it looks, not be It looks anything. like they are blank, sorry about that. So we come to the end and as I say, we are looking to, we've, we've had to work hard to find a solution to what's happened, but we are now happy that we've met all the technical re requirements and we're looking to permit with conditions. Right, thank you. Right, any questions to officers? Councillor Lynn? Councillor Kern? Uh, yes, I notice at the bottom of page 39, I think it's about the bottom of page 39, um, reference is made to um, a complaint file being opened for the alleged unauthorised development of, of, in relation to these two semi semis and so on. Um, am I correct in reading that, because I'm not an expert, am I correct in reading that that, that actually that enforcement uh, notice has been served but withdrawn pending the a, a determination of this particular planning application? Is that what the process is? The, the enforcement notice, uh, Councillor Lynn, is still in place. Right. Um, I believe it was... Um, uh, confirmed by um, the planning inspector on, on, on appeal. So there is an existing enforcement issue that um, needs to be resolved one, one way or another. And obviously one approach would be to sort of demolish the dwellings and rebuild them further back in the site. But what's come forward is a... Um, 
a, a potential compromise which which reduces the dwellings from two to one in order to ease the um the traffic the traffic situation but one way or another there is still a, an ongoing enforcement matter and obviously mr demark can if, if required give members a bit more surety around around the highway situation yeah, absolutely Chair, may I just come back in again? Yes, that was actually going to be my, my question because I'm quite concerned that given that this application is before the committee, um, partly as a result of unauthorised development having taken place before, um, and particularly, you know, I'm very conscious of the fact that if you have a large detached dwelling as opposed to two semi-detached dwellings, it doesn't necessarily reduce the number of vehicles that are going to be in evidence there and therefore using the entrance and all the rest of it. So I would welcome an opportunity to hear from um, from Mr. Dimmock about the perspective of the highways, if I may. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Andrew, do you want to come in at this this point? I think, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, well, yeah, as I, as I said in my comments, the main difference, um, I don't know if we can get the drawing up again, um, the proposed site plan um, is that with a single dwelling, there's obviously more parking uh, provision both um, within the, the, the two space garage and the, um, the external apron area. And also, there's less likelihood of the neighbouring property when it was two semi detached dwellings of, um, of, of creating an obstruction. Whereas with a single dwelling, there would actually be ample room for three or even four car, uh, cars to be parked um, and to turn around with quite a low likelihood, I think, of reversing out onto Copley Lane. So I'm, I'm more than happy with the uh, the revised scheme. Okay. Councillor Curtin. It's a similar question, really, uh, to Andrew on the parking issues. Um, assuming that uh, we've got the double garage there, but assuming that people come home from work or at weekends and they don't put the cars in the garage, have we still got provisions for parking for any visitors there without blocking the lane? Oh uh, yes, um, there's because of the, the arrangement, there's, a, there's a, an area to the side of the property um, within the site boundary where you could park a car and also adjacent to the garage in front of the building parallel. Um, and so there could be two cars parked there and still room to get a car and turn around um, say a visitor, a family friend, or even like I said, it could be a, th given the number of dwell of um, bedrooms, um, it could be a, a, a three or four bed um, family, car family. So um, yeah, there's, uh, we've actually checked it, the dimensions, we've got uh, auto track sweat pad software, uh, that's been checked, so uh, it, it's fine. Okay, I'm fine with that, Jay. thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, just just to clarify something here, as chair, am I allowed to ask questions as well to officers? Yeah. Um, obviously, now that this is this this property is turning into uh, just the one property, is there any caveats in there to prevent it from being turned into two? Because obviously, the design still has the two front doors to the property, and again, two front door, two rear doors to the property as well. Obviously, obviously, Chair, they have applied for one dwelling, so any permission, if issued with conditions, would refer to one dwelling, um, and that's what they would have permission for. So obviously, if they were to do something different, then we would have the ability to intervene. Okay, thank you. Any more, any more questions? Just, just a point which um, Legal Officer Mike want to um, make make a comment on but obviously I suspect what we would probably need to do is amend the enforcement notice if, if permission is granted um, but that's something we would need to we would need to consider sorry if I put you on the spot uh, um, no not necessarily I mean I guess it's it's a conversation that obviously the enforcement yeah. proceedings is slightly removed from from what we are looking at here. But um, as it stands, it doesn't necessarily need to be amended or anything because um, 
yeah, so there would be a new. Um, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, but so, uh, yeah, it's 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 a so discussion. If they implement the new, yeah. So if they implement the new permission, the enforcement issues go away. If, yes. If they implement yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Councillor Lynn. Sorry. Yes, but that's precisely what I'm concerned about, really, is that if we're have a, having a situation where the local authorities have to go to the trouble and the expense of um, taking out an enforcement order because the previous development was not in accordance with what this this authority had agreed was, was permissible, um, I think it's, and if, it's, if the development is being undertaken by the same applicant as before, um, on whom an enforcement order has had to be taken, um, I just think, you know, I, well, I just want to put, I just want to put on record my, my concern that we we do not simply walk away. I don't know what the outcome of this application will be. I don't know whether it will be a decision to permit or refuse. But in the event of a decision to permit, I think it is very important that we do make note of, we learn from history and that we do not actually have to wait until there are further complaints, uh, etc., from neighbours or other people before we have to move to an enforcement notice. But I just wanted to make that make that point, if I may. Thank you. Okay. Right. No more questions. Um, we have an objector. We have Phil Chatburn. Is, is it Phil who's having problems with the connection? Yeah. Yes, Chair. I'm just bringing him through now. He's, he's there as far as I know. Right, okay. Come on, Phil. Oh. Phil, can you hear us okay? Yeah, I can now. Yeah, it was a bit blurry before. It's just come back on. The line was dropping down. Sorry about that. Right, no, not a problem. We can hear you. We can hear you clear. Um, Phil, you have five minutes uh, to put your objection across on this. What I will do is uh, I'll let you know when you've got 60 seconds left. Okay. And after your five minutes is up, uh, members will have the opportunity, councils will have the opportunity to ask you questions. Okay. Um, okay, so I'll let me stop watching. Yeah. I have a few questions to ask, obviously. The property was originally previously re refused. How can this possibly be overturned when it's still on the incorrect footprint? And also, has anyone from the uh, council actually visited the site recently to see how, you know, whereabouts this tracking software says it will allow vehicles to come in and out without any objections or any, you know, things in the way? Uh, when obviously the builders continue to build the property, he's, he's not stopped doing any further development on it. He's even put the lights and it looks completely finished. Does the builder know something that we don't? Uh, obviously, me being the direct neighbour directly opposite the property, does he know something that we don't in relation to getting it passed or possibly passed today? Uh, evidently wise, when the building control came out originally, why was it not spotted then that he was putting it onto the incorrect footprint, which is obviously when they were digging the footings, you know, pre-concrete being poured and everything else, but continue to, you know, do what he was doing, you know, some 12 months ago now since it was refused, and yet again he's continued to the point where he's more or less at the stage for moving in, from my eyes. Uh, obviously, in relation to, in the event this building is passed, does this mean that no permission is required by allowing any builder to do as they please with no repercussion? It's kind of, you know, it's gone to the stage where we've done a, done a displease, completely avoided any what it was originally passed or approved for, and, you know, got to the stage where now it's been appealed and this is where we are today. My line's frozen by the look of it. Sorry, we can hear you. Again. Phil, is that the end of your your objection, Phil, or have you lost contact again? I think we've lost him, Chair. Have we? Did we have a statement then to read out from the, the objector? I've sent it through to the planning team for them to read out the list of questions which um, it, he had started to go through. I don't know if there are any more because I've not got them on the screen. So they've been right. sent to Richard Maria and to um, Anita. Right, okay. Um, because obviously we've lost connection with Mr Chapburn. Is it 
should we go through the the statement that is actually sent? Apologies, I haven't, I can't get access to it, so I don't know if, if Richard, can you help? Yes, it might be easier if I just read his statement in its entirety, because it's not, it's not very long. Um, with reference to the unauthorised development, my questions are, the property was refused previously, how can this now be overturned when the dwelling is still sat on the incorrect footprint? Why would the builder continue to complete the development? if he wasn't confident on this getting past, or does he know something other people don't? When building control checked the footing, why was this not stopped going any further when it was clear the house is not being built as per plans? In the event this building is passed, does this clearly mean no permission is required allowing any builders to do as they please with no repercussion? There is still no adequate parking on the site for any houses and does not avoid parking on the road, causing major congestion and increased risk of accidents on this bend. My garden no longer has any privacy, being overshadowed by this obscene structure. How can this be right? So that's the that's the statement from the ob objector. The obviously the the point just to emphasise in 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 response to that is that the application that was refused um, and this is and the development is subject to the enforcement notice is for is for two dwellings whereas this is now an application for a single dwelling so it is obviously uh, qualitatively and quantitatively different Phil's actually Paul, coming back in, so let's see if we can get him to join the meeting again. Paul, you're muted. Sorry, thank you. He's just coming through now. Right, I'll just get clarification now from, from Gurpreet with uh, what we've done so far. Obviously, the objectors had like two and a half minutes, but Richard's finished off with the, the statement from the objector. So can we now go back to uh, questions to the objector? If he's back with us. Oh, has he disappeared? <laughs> I think he's gone again. Okay. Do we yeah, have I, yeah, in answer to your question, yeah, he's disappeared. Yeah, 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 I think, yeah. He's, he's gone he's again anyway. We've, we've lost him again. So I, yeah. suppose, I don't know if there's any questions or comments to on on the objector with regards to the objection on this. Possibly to Richard. Ah, Phil, you're back. Phil, can you hear us okay? Phil, can you hear us okay? Gone again. Gone again. Is there any, any questions anyone can actually put to our officers in on this? Councillor Curtin. Yeah, it's not a question to officers at this point, but when uh, Richard read out the... Uh, the statement from Mr. Chan. Um, Richard was going to, or, or I think he was halfway through. Councillor Curtin, we've lost your signal. You've lo we've lost your. We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Can you hear me? Yep, we've got you now. No. Um, Richard, I think that what I, I would ask there is that. Can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yes. Uh, Rich, I think just, I don't want to ask any questions to Mr. Chapburn, but Richard was halfway through, Richard read his, Mr. Chapburn's questions out and was halfway through, I believe halfway through, to reply to some of Mr. Chapburn's questions. So could we ask Richard to finish off his reply, please? Well, the, I mean, the, the main point I was, I was making is that the current application is substantively different because it's for one dwelling as opposed to two dwellings so yes it is on the site um the same siting as the scheme that was refused and is subject to an enforcement notice but as it is qualitatively and quantitatively different if, given that it's a single a single dwelling 
and clearly that's what has informed the um the highways the highways officers views i i don't really have any other comments in in in, in response to mr chatburn's um statement unless obviously members have any questions hey, richard if you wouldn't mind just add in terms of residential and me amenity for Mr Chapburn. Obviously, we have as officers look very closely ensuring that distances between windows, etc. exceed the guidelines and I think that's all set out in page 43 of your report. Okay, right. There are no more questions that can be put forward at this point. Council, Council Lee? There we are. Yes, it's, um, I'm just puzzled really to, um, in a way it doesn't have a bearing on what we're, I'm not sure it has a bearing on what we're doing now, but one of the points that the objector made was um, why the uh, why it, he alleges that the building that's gone up has gone up on a, a different footprint from what was previously approved and why was that not picked up by building control and I'm just wondering I mean it, it, it doesn't it doesn't materially affect what we're going to decide on now but I'm just wondering what is the answer for that do, do building control not look at the plans when they go and check the footings and everything I mean without checking the planning history I, I can't confirm whether it was dealt with by Coldenale Building Control or uh, an approved inspector. I can't. I can't answer that um, question. I'd need to go back into our um, back office database system. Um, but what I will say is that the enforcement issue has been ongoing for for quite some quite some time. It's it's not the case that you know the, that we've only uh, only just noticed the, um, the the discrepancy. There's been various applications. There's been applications brought to the planning committee with refusal um, recommended and obviously agreed by members. With certain enforcement notice, that enforcement notice went to appeal so it's been a it's been a long-running saga and the the applicant has um chosen to carry on building in 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 the meantime but that is something that applicants do at their own at their own risk it's not it's not uncommon unfortunately um but it's, it's certainly it's not it not something that sort of slipped below the radar until a late until a a late stage. Okay, right. I think then at, at this point, I don't think we're going to get to speak to the the objector because he keeps we keep losing him. Um, we do have the agent here, however, I believe Susan. Yeah, so we've got the agent up next to speak, which is uh, Roger Lee. Right. Mr. Lee, can you hear us okay? I can, yes. Yep, fantastic. Uh, Mr. Lee, you've got five minutes. Uh, at the end of that five minutes, um, we'll obviously, members will ask you questions and uh, I will let you know when you've got 60 seconds left of your five minutes. Okay, thank you. I won't need five minutes, actually. No. So very, very brief. Um, just three quick things. Um, the presentation that, that uh, has been made with the slides, I think, sets everything out um, and summarises things very clearly. The highway officer has come in with some comments, which again are very clear on the, on the highway issues and what's now happened with this latest application to resolve the previous concerns. And just finally on the enforcement notice, that the way I understand it is that still stands for, for the two dwellings. Uh, but not not related to this application for one. So, you know, I think there was a question about if there was an issue um, in that one dwelling that's applied for now became two again, then the enforcement notice, uh, which has already been um, sort of upheld following an appeal, would then come back into play. Other than that, I have nothing else to say. Thank you. 
Okay. Thank you, Roger. Any any questions to the uh, the agent, Councillor Lynn? Um, yes, yes, Mr. Lee. Um, can you just because I couldn't see all the slides as in as, as much detail as we would have as we would perhaps have liked. Um, can you just explain what changes are going to be made to the building, which I understand is 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 you know nearly finished? What changes is, is it anticipated will be made to turn two houses into one? Thank you. Uh, the changes, principally, I, I would say, are, are all internal rather than external. Um, principally, the reintroduction of a garage, um, integral garage on the ground floor, um, connecting doors on the first and second floors. Um, so to you know, obviously link what was previously two dwellings into one. Um, and that's, that's all that the changes are. You know, they're very much um, minor because the general layout remains as it was approved, uh, initially approved. Okay. Sorry, yeah. Well, <laughs> call me a cynic, but if you if if I mean in, in one house you normally have one staircase, don't you, going up to the upper floor, and apparent and presumably if this was built as two semi-detached, you know, as a pair of semi-detached, it's got two staircases. So what you're saying is there was there, this is going to be one house which still has two staircases in it, and is it still going to have two front doors, and um, why why should anybody believe that it's actually only going to be one house? That's what I want to understand before, before because I don't want us to be in a situation where we permit this dwelling on, on the new application, the basis of a single dwelling, and then have to go through all the rigmarole of, uh, and goodness knows, you know, it takes a lot of officer time and everything to have to do another, go through another enforcement order process if we do not believe that, that it's, it is actually being built as one dwelling rather than two. That's all I wanted to know. Thanks. Uh, well, just a couple of things on that. Firstly, and I think it's been it's been made clear in some of the discussion you've had already that work uh, work has continued. Work had substantially taken place already, anyway, uh, as I understand it. Before um, a number of these applications were subsequently made. So when you say yes, it is unusual to have two staircases. But they had already been put in, so rather than take them out, they remain in. I don't think that's particularly critical, though, because when you say you don't want to go through the process of if it then becomes too semi-detached again and you have to go through an enforcement order again, you don't go through an enforcement order again. The enforcement notice stands. The enforcement notice requires the dwellings to be demolished. So let's say if we play the cynic's role and we say, well, all right, he gets permission for one, but he then reverts it to two, the enforcement notice then becomes applicable again, and that requires the dwellings to be demolished. So by, just sheerly by definition, that can't happen, because if it did happen, the dwellings have to go. It has to be one house. Okay, thank you. Councillor Naeem, then Councillor Pierce. Yeah. Can I just make the, make the clear from that, what Mr. Lee just said, that, that the enforcement notice, once it's withdrawn, it can be actually reinvoked if they're not in planning guidelines. Because if, as, as uh, Councillor Lee just sort of said, that if the developers are going back to sort of uh, two houses, uh, then, you know, how can the, the kind of enforcement notice come back? Because it's been withdrawn. It, it has been complied with in some way. So I'm not so sure. Can somebody advise us on that? Uh, Councillor, my understanding is that the enforcement notice for two dwellings isn't withdrawn. It stays in place. So that'll always be there. They'll get the permission for one. So if they then did turn it into two, we've got the enforcement notice there, which um, Mr Lee rightly says would mean he would have to demolish. Unless, sorry, right? unless unless he puts in a, another planning application, um, you know, to sort of change that to two dwellings, it would be a different kind of application altogether, would it not? 
Uh, yeah, and of course, we would look at that application. And obviously, I can't consider an application that isn't before us. But we know why we're not considering two dwellings in that location at the moment. And it would still stand at that point because there isn't sufficient parking and turning for two. Okay. Councillor Curtin. Thank you, Chair. My question was very similar and I was just going to ask uh, Gerpreet if she could reinforce those comments from uh, a legal point of view. <clears throat> yeah, sure, Councillor Curtin. Yeah, what Maria has said is, is absolutely correct. Um, it's what I was going to say. Um, the enforcement notice hasn't been withdrawn. It's, it's, still, it's still there. So if the dwelling or the, if the dwelling were to turn into two dwellings, then we have the enforcement notice there that would bite um, on that. So yeah, what, what Maria has, has said, yeah, I absolutely um, endorse what she said. I mean, in terms of what um, Councillor Naeem says, yes, there is a possibility that um, another planning application could be submitted, but that's, that, that is the system and, 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 and that's the way it works. But obviously, again, I, I would, um, echo what Maria has said in terms of you know the considerations um, but just to sort of bring it back to what we are looking at and what is before us that is what we sort of need to that's what you as members need to focus on the application that is before you yes I appreciate that there have been enforcement proceedings um, historically um, but at the same time our enforcement powers always exist but I think we just need to bring it back to the application that is in that is before us. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Chair. I think we're fairly clear on that. Councillor Clark. Thank you, Chair. Could a, could a condition be put on um, any permission um, that it permanently stays as one dwelling? I think that's the the Richard. Did you hear me? Well, you wouldn't. You wouldn't, you wouldn't need to do that because um, going from um, one dwelling to two dwellings requires requires planning permission. Mm. So the condition the condition wouldn't meet the the legal tests for conditions because it. I was just thinking of make, making it perfectly clear before it's turned into two, and then retrospectively ask if that for that permission. We don't want that yes, to happen. But then. But then as I say, there's a there's an existing enforcement notice in place yeah. that would um, mitigate. Or that it's already in place, so you need planning permission to go from one dwelling to two dwellings. Yeah. And if the applicant wanted or someone wanted to do that, um, given the planning history of the site, we would. We would bring it back to planning committee because the planning committee has previously refused applications for two two dwellings. Um, so it would it would come back to members in those circumstances. And as others have said, there is already um, an extant enforcement notice relating relating to that. So I think adding a adding a condition wouldn't sort of materially add to. Um, well, the council's position at all um it wouldn't it wouldn't serve any sort of particular purpose thank you councillor baines um yeah just think it, if if um if it's not our building uh and for building officers who are who go and check the final uh scheme um would our planning officers have a have a right to go in and check before, you know, when, when the building's complete? I mean, we can, we have powers under planning legislation um, to enter property, to um, investigate, uh, amongst other things, to investigate alleged breaches of planning control. We need to give notice if it's a residential property. Uh, um, I mean, obviously, it's, it's something we like to sort of, you know, try to avoid sort of <laughs> demanding entry to to people's residential properties. But I mean, maybe what we what we could say is that once the um, 
once once the property is complete, if 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 the applicant um, was to contact contact us, then certainly you know a planning officer or building control officer could could take a, could take a look at the property. I don't I don't think it's something that we would attach to um, a, a planning commission at all. But um, you know, if we were, if we were asked to look at the property, um, we, we we certainly could do. Do we have any more questions for the for the agent, or are these now questions aimed at at, at officers? No, it's, if I can come back in. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Mr. Lee, would you be prepared to allow one of our officers to come in when when the building is complete, or can that be arranged so that we're informed? Yeah, yes, well, I mean, I, it's not for me to say that, that, that I can give that permission, but yes, I would say to the applicant that that's something that um, should be agreed to and arranged if required. Just, if I can just, just come back on a few points that were just being raised about what if another application comes in for two dwellings, because that does seem to be a concern. Given the fact that there have been applications for two dwellings, and I'm sure Richard will agree with me on this, is that there's been applications, they've been subject of an appeal, those appeals have been refused. If an application did come in for two dwellings now, next week, even next year, the council can refuse to entertain those applications because there has been an unsuccessful appeal. And I know that's been done before. Yeah. So that, that, I think that just rules out that, that, that perhaps suspicion, what if that happens, it can't happen. Or if it did happen, it can be rejected. Okay. But happy, yeah, happy for someone to come inside and inspect it at any point. Councillor May? Yeah, just a straightforward question, really. In terms of utilities, will the will the property or properties have two uh, water meters or electric meters or gas meters, or are we just going for one? Do just one. Okay. Is there any more any more questions for the agent? No. Okay. Thank you, Roger. Appreciate your time on that. Thanks. Okay. Any comments and or proposals on this application to officers? Councillor Baines and Councillor Lynn. Councillor Baines. Yeah, I, th I think from what we've heard, I, I, I think um, we, uh, we've got to accept officers' recommendations, in my opinion, and uh, let the scheme go on. Okay, so we've got a, pro we've got a proposal then to accept officers' recommendations. Okay. Do we have a, a, a seconder for Councillor Baines? So, Councillor Clark, uh, are you seconding Councillor Baines? Councillor Lynn, did you have a a comment or proposal? Uh, yes, I, I, I appreciate you've now got a proposal before you, so you need to consider that. No, I was actually, before we moved on to that, I wonder if it might be possible to um, to ask Richard to comment upon the uh, ward councillor's comment, which related to um, concern that, that um, concern about the kind of, the road safety issues on Copley Lane and so on and so forth, because that seemed to me to be something we haven't, hasn't really been addressed. Although, albeit we have heard from Andrew in relation to, particularly in relation to, you know, whether there was enough room on the site to turn for vehicle for, for for two or three or four vehicles to turn and so on and so forth, that should obviate the need for going for reversing out onto the the uh, the lane and so on and so forth. But I just I, yes. I, I, I would welcome yes. either Richard or Andrew just before we move on to do anything else. I would just welcome um, somebody addressing that issue about safety issues actually on Cop. Copley Lane, which is a, a, a acknowledged to have caused problems by the ward councils, acknowledged to cause problems to pedestrians and cyclists. That's all. Richard. I mean, I think the, the whole conversation really has been sort of indirectly predicated on on that concern, because if we were in a scenario where it was safe, so we were on a sort of residential cul-de-sac somewhere with you know low traffic speeds and only sort of local sort of traffic accessing the properties it wouldn't necessarily be a problem if if people had to sort of reverse out onto the road or sort of 
sometimes is a car on the road. What we're concerned about in this case is that Copley Lane is so so poor from a highway safety point of view. I mean, we took members on a side visit there, and most people locally will, will know it, that the road is narrow, it's steep, there's a sweeping bend, it's only got pedestrian facilities on one side of the road. So the whole the whole concern that um, Mr. Demock has gone into around sort of turning and manoeuvring is predicated on his concern that it's just not acceptable for cars to a um, have to reverse out onto Copley Lane um, or b just be sort of left parked up on Copley Lane. There needs to be space for the cars to park within the site, manoeuvre, and then exit in a in a in a forward gear. And it's only on that basis that that it's acceptable having regard to the physical limitations of Copley Lane. But I think Mr. DeMarc might might want to comment further, but hopefully I've uh, um, answered the... Okay. Uh, yeah, I can I can't really add to that, Richard. I think you've covered everything. Um, it, everything um, on my comments were based on safety um and the concerns with the previous uh, schemes but this this you know this is, this is addressed it now um so so safety has been covered fully okay okay council in you're happy with that yeah okay so we've got a proposal on the table then from councillor bain seconded by councillor clark to go with officers recommendations to permit um do we have any other comments or proposals no, Councillor Lynn. Uh, well, I, I'd, I'd like to propose that we do not go with officers' recommendations and that we do not permit, but I'm quite happy to just vote against it because I suspect I'm going to be in a minority of one. Um, so I don't think you need to bother about it being an amendment. I shall just vote against it. Right. But that's it, okay. Do you want, on, on what conditions should you be objecting to it? So I'm um, sorry. Sorry, I. I, int I intend to object because I am not convinced that the plans that have been put before us are plans for a single dwelling. Because the, in response to my questions about what made this a, a single dwelling house as opposed to two dwelling houses, I am not convinced that it is going to be one single dwelling house. And I think I would like to see the plans resubmitted so that they actually look like a single house with one staircase, et cetera, et cetera. And if it, was, if it looked like a single house, fine. But at the moment, I am not convinced that what we have got put before us is a plan for a single house. And on those grounds, I intend to object. Right, I think that would be a difficult one to oppose against. Have you got any, are you, any thoughts on, on that? Um, I think Councillor Lynn's sort of said that she's not she's not proposing to move a motion, so she's just saying that she's just going to she's not going to vote with the proposal. So I think I okay. think we're so, I think we're okay. Subject. Okay, okay. So the, the proposal then, all those in favour of the proposal that's on the table. Councillor Baines, Councillor Clark, Councillor Curtin, okay. All those against Councillor Lynn, Councillor Naeem, okay. So that, uh, that's actually passed on Mr's recommendations to permit. Okay, thank you. I would suggest at this moment in time, as we've had quite a bit of time on the last three applications, that we uh, take a five minute comfort break so people can just grab a drink and then uh, and then come back. We are on uh, five to four now, so sort of four o'clock. Yeah, it's okay with that. Everybody's happy with that. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So I was going to share my screen so it's ready for when we come back. Uh, I, I was actually going to put a notice up to say we'll be back in five minutes because otherwise all we can see is everybody moving away. But if you want to share your screen ready, but just leave it on your desktop. All okay. right. Okay.
Chair, if you can let me know when you're ready to go and I'll unmute everybody. All right, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm ready if everybody's back. Right, I'll unmute. I'm back. Okay. Chair, can you hear me? Yep, yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. Can you hear me? Chair, Chair, can you hear me? I'm getting a message which says I can't start the video because the host won't let me. <laughs> so maybe they've seen it. maybe you've seen enough of me. Control. Today. It's control. <laughs> You're not on your own with this. They've done the same with me as well. <laughs> I think we're all I think we're all back, are we? I'm just nope. going through now. Council in Council Curtain's back. All right, thank you. Yes. Yeah, Council Naeem. Councillor Clark, Councillor Baines, Richard's back. Yeah. And yeah. Andrew. Yeah. Right. OK. Uh, last item today is uh, the land between the A629 and B6112, Stainland Road, Elland. Application number 18 forward slash 101544 forward slash. OK. So, officers, it's uh, over to you. I'm sorry, uh, councillors, can you see my screen? Because I've got a problem at the moment. We can. You can, you, you can see the presentation, can you? We can, yes. Yeah. Yes, we and can. And is that big enough for you? Because I, feel, I don't want to touch any more buttons in case I lose it all. Uh, no, it's absolutely fine. <laughs> right. Um, just briefly to recap, this application was presented to Planning Committee uh, in May 2019. Um, Planning Committee resolved to determine it in accordance with the recommendation of director of regeneration strategy, which was mindful to permit, subject to the completion of the section 106 agreement, to deliver a five-year improvement and management plan for Elland Wood. Uh, and this was in respect to compensation for woodland. And we also recommended condition 16, which uh, tied in with that uh, section 106 in, in regard to a management plan. Briefly, uh, the proposed development targets the current pinch point at Colden and Hebble Junction. An improvement to the highway are proposed as past application, and they are set out in the report. But very briefly, extinguishment of the existing link between the A629 and the current mini roundabout at Stainer Road, Wakefield Road, removal of current A629 signal control junction at the bottom of Edward Bottom, a new highway link between the A629 and Stainer Road a bridge over the canal, uh, over the canal and widening of base 1629 to facilitate to four lanes southbound. Um, and there will be a further realignments and works. Uh, the proposed works of 8629 require the removal of 0 0.078 of a hectare of Elland Wood, which is designated as ancient woodland. To date, this section has not been completed. Therefore, this application has not been issued. Engagement with the landowner has been ongoing regarding the scheme as a whole for nearly th three years. Whilst early discussions are positive and paperwork has been drafted, the Section 106 remains unsigned. The project is now at a critical point where side road orders and compulsory purchase orders need to be made to ensure that the programme of works is achieved in line with the funding agreement. The planning consent is fundamental to the legal process. In discussion with the council's officer, a site at the western end of North Dean Woods in the council ownership has been identified as in need of management. This site, in addition being to also being an ancient semi-woodland, uh, similar to Elland Wood, is also a local nature reserve and a local wildlife site. The proposal for you today seeks to provide the necessary compensation for the loss of the 0 0.078 hectares of ancient woodland on an appropriate alternative site uh, of a comparable status. So what we're asking the committee today to do is uh, grant, uh, to grant permission subject to a revised condition 16 
um, which would seek uh, a management and improvements to um, the Dean Woods, uh, North Dean Woods, instead of the works to Ellen Woodland. So just briefly, um, run you through the application as a reminder. This is the site here. Uh, this area here is Ellen Ward. It stretches along the embankment uh, up the hill here. Uh, Anita, north there's no, there's no I'm sorry, we can't see. We can't can't see anything. Anything. The screen's frozen. Screen's frozen? Yeah. Yeah, the screen's I don't know how to unfreeze it. That's my problem. Wait a minute. It, has that come up now? No, just the first page, Anita, that's on, that's all, with the representative. I've got, I, I think I've got an intermittent internet connection. If I, uh, do you want me to just describe it through? Because I think most people actually know, know the area. Um, North, uh, Elland Woodland is the area of Woodland as you go up uh, south towards Huddersfield, which is on the, on your left hand side. The uh, North Dean Woods are actually located on, on to your right hand side, south of um, Wakefield Road. Um, the site is partially within the green belt, um, although the development um, development is not considered to be inappropriate development in the green belt as it wouldn't um, impact on, uh, as it would preserve the openness of the impact of, of preserve the openness of the green belt and not conflict with the purposes of the land being included in the green belt. The application was accompanied by an environmental statement, which had been prepared in accordance with best practice. And these findings are set out in the report that you have. In respect to design and heritage, there would be some harm to the landscape character and setting of non-listed heritage assets of the canal infrastructure in the vicinity of the new road bridge over the canal, but this harm can, uh, has, can be mitigated through choice of materials and there's conditions in the uh, proposed, which include um, consultation with the canals and river trust as to the approach for the, uh, to the design of the bridge. The proposals are not considered to harm the setting of the group of grade two listed buildings at the canal basin, and neither the canal, canals or river, uh, canals or river trust, sorry, the canal and river trust or the council's conservation officer raise any objections subject to the mitigation measures, including landscaping and design of facing materials, stone details, coursing and jointing to be agreed. Uh, highways. Uh, have been consulted. Overall, the proposals represent a significant improvement in terms of pedestrian and cycle connectivity. The Bond Street and Cano Canal towpath uh, provision have been well integrated. The scheme will also provide improvements to both the public transport users and motorists in terms of additional capacity and journey times uh, will be reduced. There have been uh, no objections have been raised and it's agreed that the points raised by the transport team previously can be addressed at the detailed design stage, such as signage of the shared pedestrian and cycle facilities and location of drop curves to provide access and egress to the cycle lanes. There's also a dedicated bus lane coming from Stainland Road up towards Halifax. In regard to flood and, uh, flooding and drainage, the site falls within flood zones one, two and three. No objection has been raised by the Environment Agency or the lead local flood authority, subject to the conditions that are recommended and included in the report. In respect to ground conditions, the Assistant Director, Neighbourhoods and Environmental Health have raised no objections, subject to a condition covering the recommendations submitted in the uh, Geo Environmental in Investigation Report. And that um, is also included. So, T returning to wildlife and conservation, there are significant biodiversity improvements uh, throughout the whole scheme. We've got new landscaping, new planting, and that is covered in conditions specifically relating to the scheme itself. And the aforementioned condition 16, which will require a management plan, an agreement of tasks and works to be completed 
at North Dean Woods in compensation for the loss of the ancient woodland. One specific point that was mentioned previously at committee when this was first discussed was the uh, issue of air quality. Um, there is an AQM further up uh, towards Halifax uh, on Salter of Hebel Hill. Uh, a small number of properties, eight out of potential 13,000 residential properties, um, have poten could potentially be adversely impacted by the scheme. There are mitigation measures proposed, including uh, technology, uh, including smart corridor management. And this introduces a coordinated signal signaling infrastructure to reduce uh, queuing of traffic up Salter Hebel Hill and allow a smooth uh, movement of vehicles. So you don't get the queue, so you don't get the stop start and you don't get the pollution. Um, Environmental Health has suggested that air quality monitoring takes place in advance of the scheme and continue beyond its completion so that we can monitor the impacts on air quality. That is actual fact uh, in discussion at the present moment and being agreed with environmental health. Um, so that is all already been taken on board by the applicant. And of course, there will be change, there are future changes in um, car technologies move to electric vehicles, which long term will also help to mitigate uh, and improve air quality in the area. Therefore, uh, balanced judgment, uh, a balanced judgment is required, having regard to the scale of harm and the public benefits of the proposals in conjunction with the mitigation measures I, I described earlier, it is considered that the interventions as a whole um, will, will not result in um, an adverse impact from five years beyond the implementation date of the scheme. So once the scheme is open, five years beyond that, we will see a general accordance in, with national and local policy in respect of air quality. Anita, can I just yeah. stop you there? Yeah. Richard said if you stop sharing your screen, he can actually share it. And I think it's wise that we actually do see the presentation because... Yeah, I've got, I've got a slight problem at the moment because I can't seem to be able to unshare because all I seem to have got in front of me is you at the top of my main screen. If anyone can direct me to what I'm doing wrong. I think because of the, at the top, of this application, at the top. Yeah. I think it's wise that we have a really fully... We can make Does a that, full decision on this. Has that gone now? Because I've got nothing in front of me at all, no screen at all, apart from you, yourselves. Right. Let's just see if I if, can do. If you just stop screen sharing fully, which should be somewhere at the top. Yeah. Uh, uh, We're still you, viewing at the moment. I've I've lost absolutely everything in front of me except yourselves. I'm afraid. Hang on, I'll just take, I'll stop the sharing. There oh, you go. right, that's better. Okay, Thank so you. I'm just going to, I'll reenact it yeah. now. Right, right. so um, Richard, well, you can now share. Whilst, whilst Richard go, uh, goes into sharing, um, I'll just conclude, then I can run through the presentation. Okay, thank you, yeah. That's so, um, just say that uh, it's unfortunate that the, that the improvements can't be made at Ellen Wood um, to enable us to progress the application but we can deliver the public benefits of the scheme on time and within budget and some over even more benefits by the alternative scheme. So Rich is showing that. Um, so we can, we, we believe we can um, deliver qualitative and quantitative improvements over and above the original management scheme of Elland Wood at the alternative location. And with it, with the exception of impacts on a small small number of sensitive receptors, in this instance, the conflict is outweighed by the material considerations, namely the public benefits of the whole as the scheme as a whole. So that is the recommendation. So if I run for the screens, if Richard um, can click the button for me. So in front of you now, you've got next one. Yeah, you've got the site, and you can see there the Ellen Woodland, which is on your. Uh, as you look at the screen, it's on your right-hand side, North Dean Woods, which is on your left. 
um, on the aerial view, which is the next slide, um, it just gives you that you can actually see North Dean Woods and the extent of North Dean Woods there, which is, is the dark area. Um, and again, so looking at the scheme schematics, here you've got um, the roundabout in your bottom um, left-hand corner. This replaces the triangular um, junction, um, which uh, and signalised um, signals there. So you'll have a freer flow of traffic um, coming around this junction, and you've got the new link, and you've got the uh, the balancing pond there, which it will also in that area there include a large amount of planting biodiversity net gain. So the aerial photograph, which is next gives you an idea, you've got the canal basin in your bottom left. So you're looking out over the scheme, you've got the direction of Huddersfield, Road, uh, Huddersfield and Halifax there, and you can see the roundabout and state, uh, route to Stainland. And again, I think the next one's an overview of the scheme. Um, looking south, so you've got the road up to Stainland, you've got the roundabout and um, sweep of the road. Uh, Ellen Woodland is that woodland which is now on your left hand side. Yes, and North Dean Woods will be the other side. Yeah. And then, uh, go up, next one. Just to give you a quick overview of. Um, so you've got the canal there, you've got the roundabout and the balancing pond. Next one. This. Yeah, this, this is the bridge over the canal. And if you see from the next um, slide down. Right. Um, here you see, this is where uh, I present some of the presentation. There will be some harm to the setting of the canal, although these are on this structures here. Um, it's a very pleasant view uh, looking down the canal in both directions, and we will get the bridge over the canal. But the detailing of um, stone parapets the pointing and the colouring um, will help to uh, mitigate those impacts and they'll look more like a traditional um, bridge you'd see in other places of the canals, although it would be substantially bigger. And down the next one. So um, this is this is extent of um, Ellen Woodland as previously and again. And this is the area um, of North Dean Wood, which the management plan would cover. Okay, one more, I think. And just, again, giving you the detail uh, of the scheme. So I apologize for that, uh, councillors. I seem to have a, that's a blank screen. I seem to have a problem with the internet connection. It's probably been uh, waiting so long to, uh, for me but it's uh, got a bit haywire. Thank you. Okay, no, thank you, Ed. Got there in the end. Yeah. Um, okay. If I can come off the screen, Richard, if that's okay. Thank you. Okay. Any questions, members or officers? With no questions, with nobody wishing to speak on this. Um, okay, there's no objectors, no councillors, no applicants or agents, so basically it's straightforward to uh, comments and uh, proposals then. Councillor Curtin. Yes, thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Chair? Yep. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I remember it doesn't seem two minutes ago since we discussed this in uh, in great detail last time. Uh, clearly, there are there are, there are some uh, some amendments to it, but this will have a major benefit uh, to our link road between um, Cotterdale and Huddersfield, and in particular Cotterdale and and this area. And I'd be quite happy to move officers' recommendations. Okay, I second that. Councillor Baines. Oh. Sorry, Councillor Curtin, we keep losing you. I'm just saying, yeah, did you, did you get my drift there that I'm quite happy to approve this? We did. 
Yeah. Thank you. And 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 in and in saying that, um, it's, I think it's important that we. This will be a major benefit to Calderdale and our link road to Huddersfield, and of course this area. And it might be. Okay. So, Councillor Thurston, can you hold a proposal? Councillor, are you in your seconding? That's Councillor Thurston's proposal. Yes, I am. Councillor Baines, do you have any comments or proposals? No, I just put my hand up to second it. Right, okay. Councillor Lynn? Yes, I think I, I think I am minded to, to support it, but I just wanted to sort of put on record that one of the things that has influenced me in wanting to support this is I think that, that it's been very creative approach by officers and everybody else involved to try to think about North Dean Woods um, as an alternative to Ellen Wood improvement. And I think a lot of thought has clearly gone into that, including the condition that there will be a 10 year man management plan for that. Um, and I think the other thing which I'm very pleased to see is that there's a number of features in, in the plan which clearly support our objective. And of course, this, this week is the government objective to get people using on their bikes and doing more walking and all the rest of it. So I think there are some quite good features in this plan which really are intended not just for the benefit of the cars using the bridge, but actually for the people walking along by the canal and for the people walking through North Dean Woods and so on. And it's my understanding that we do we are very concerned about air quality. And in fact, this whole scheme, as I understand it, because I wasn't on the original application, this whole scheme, part of what it was about was about trying to prevent the stop start um, emissions from traffic not flowing not flowing smoothly and Anita mentioned about that in her presentation mm. so on all those basic bases um, I think as somebody who supports you know decarbonisation and tackling climate change notwithstanding that I think a lot of thought has gone into this and I'm very happy to support the recommend officer's recommendation. Okay. Councillor Curtin. Yeah thank, thank you Chair it's just it's, you know I've already moved that but it's just a question, really, uh, Richard. Here, looking at the, uh, can you hear me? Keep the key can you hear me, chair. You keep breaking up. Can you hear me, chair? We can hear you now. All right. It's just a question, really. No, we can't. I'm <laughs> still got me. I'm sorry, David. You, you're a bit, you, you're a bit like Norman Collier at the moment, unfortunately. <laughs> can you hear me now, then? I can hear you now. Okay, thank you. It's just a question to Richard, actually, and I'm not sure that we can do this. Uh, but the canal bridge there is absolutely fantastic. And, and you've got to get. And you've got to get. I can just imagine when it's built. Can you hear me? No, you've gone again, David. Sorry. Have you got me now, then? Yeah. Have you got me? Have you got me now? We've got you now. Okay. Every time you ask, every time you ask us, everybody, you got you. You say yes, and then you <laughs> die. Like okay, well, I'm hoping you can hear me now. The the bridge over the canal there is fantastic. It's a great modern bridge, finished in that sort of white colour. And I can just imagine in about ten years' time. I think, if I may, just jump in there. The materials are to be agreed and it is likely to be stone and we will look at anti-graffiti paint etc which i think probably cancer person is aiming to ask it, yes it is yes yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm very pleased with that then anita thank you very much for that then right okay well we've got a proposal on the table from councillor Curtin. we've got a, a second there councillor baines did you you've seconded councillor Curtin's proposal no no, Chair, I've got Councillor Naeem second. Oh, Councillor Naeem, sorry. Okay. Um, so all those in favour of uh, this proposal, one, two, three, all in favour? Yep. Unanimous. That's carried. That's passed. With officers' recommendations to permit. So there we go. Thank you, everybody.